video is for Genetics Lab, and it's how to spread bacteria on a plate aseptically. And so to do that, one of the things we want to do is keep as clean and uncontaminated an area as possible to prevent contamination of our sample. So one thing we want to do is keep a flame going while we're working. So we have a Bunsen burner. We'll go ahead and turn on the gas and get that lit with the striker. Uh, you can see it's kind of an ugly flame right now. If that happens, it's no big deal. Once you light a, a Bunsen burner, uh, if you're not happy with the amount of flame here, you can adjust the gas. Do that not at the where the hose connects, but do that down here. Okay, so we got enough gas coming through, but the problem is we don't have enough air. You can adjust the amount of air by turning this. So we're gonna let a little more air in here. And now, oops, now. Now we have a nice, pretty blue flame. Okay, so. That'll help keep our area just a little bit cleaner by pushing the air away. And so, we have a sample that we would like to spread on our plate. And so I'm going to show you how to do that, hopefully by minimizing the chance of contamination. And one of the things we want to do is label. And so we have a Sharpie, we have a plate. Plates have a bottom, a top, the top is the lid. We want to label the bottom of our plate because we store them upside down in the incubator so that any condensation, you can see the condensation here on the lid, forms on the lid and it doesn't wash cells around on the plate. So we store them upside down, so we want to label them upside down. So I'm going to go ahead and label this right now. You want to put your name on here, your name, not mine and the date and today is july 4th and you want to put the sample whatever it is and whatever your lab section might be so that we can find you if the plate gets put in the wrong you want to do the labeling around the periphery of the plate because your bacteria are going to be small little colonies, hopefully, on the plate. Or maybe you're going to be making little plaques on the plate. And they're going to be a little hard to see if you write big letters across the bottom of the plate. And so we have this labeled. We're ready to go. So we can set that aside for a moment. And so now we have our sample. We want to get that on the plate. Now, one of the things about working aseptically is you don't want to leave anything open and, uh, when you're not using it. So you don't open things until you're ready to go into the tube and put it onto the plate. If you want to transfer something, you open the tube right when you're ready to use it. So for example, if we wanted to transfer some of this to another tube, say a microcentrifuge tube, we get out the microcentrifuge tube when we're ready, and so here's a bucket of pre-sterilized, you can tell because of the tape, pre-sterilized microcentrifuge tubes. So we'll open this up. We're going to do this using aseptic technique. That means what we don't do is reach in. If we reached into this, we contaminate them all. So what we do is we go in, we're going to pour some out. If you successfully just pour one out, that's great. If you accidentally pour out more than you need, keep them. Don't put them back because they are potentially contaminated. So we have one tube here. And let's just try transferring from the uh, small glass tube to the small microcentrifuge tube. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a pipetta, micro pipetta. These work uh, very much like a very expensive eyedropper. Okay, and we'll transfer some of this to here. Now, uh, these come in different sizes. You can always tell what the maximum volume these can transfer by looking here on the thumb. And you can't quite make it out, I think. But this says, no, it isn't going to show up in here. 
it says 100. It means it holds 100 microliters. And I think, I don't know if you can see it on there, but you can see, what I can see, is that this says 100. So it's set for 100 microliters right now. That's 0.1 mils. So to use this, we need to put on a tip. These are sterile. You can tell again by the tape. So we're just going to put this on the lid so that we know it was sterilized. The way you attach the tip, just push it on and it'll stay there. Keep the lid closed when you're not using it. Pick up your sample, take off the lid, pass it through the flame. You're going to press down with your thumb just to the first stop. You can push it further. You don't want to do that. Just to the first stop, you're going to submerge the tip. Gently release with your thumb. Pass it through the flame. Put the lid back on. Plastic tubes, you don't pass them through the flames. They melt. Push down with your thumb. This time you can push to the second stop. That gives you a little extra burst of air to make sure you get it all out of the tip. And then you can close it. Okay. This tip is disposable, so we're just going to get rid of it. That's what this back button is for. It pushes a little dispenser to get rid of the tip. Okay. So now we have our sample in there. All right, so what I was doing, you push down to the first stop, you can push a little further, but you can feel that difference. When you're pulling up a sample, if you go too far, you're not going to get the right amount. So you really have to get used to that feeling. So when you're pulling the sample up into a tip, you go to this first stop, submerge, and then up. When you're dispensing, you can go to that first stop and then push it a little bit further. Keep your thumb down, pull it out. So now, how do you put it on a plate? Same thing. You label the bottom. Now you're going to put it flat on the table. We got our tips. Nice, fresh, clean, sterile tip. You don't have to smash it down. You just have to push. We got our sample. Lid off through the flame. Take out 100 microliters through the flame. Lid back on. Now the sample is in here. We want to put it on the plate. There you go, it's on the plate. We can get rid of the tip. Problem is, the sample is all in one little drop right there on the plate. So now we've got to spread it around. And so there's a couple ways to do that. You can streak it using a loop or you can spread it using a spreader. And so we're going to use sterile single-use spreaders. And so what you do is you push one, don't reach in the bag, you push one out of the bag so that you can grab the handle. And so this is sterile until you touch it. Open the lid. It just lays gently on the plate. You don't have to shove it down. It just lays gently on the plate. And you're going to push it back and forth and you want to be able to hear it hitting the sides. It should be making little clicking sounds. Click, 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 right? After you do that for a few seconds, turn the plate. Do it again. 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 Do that nine times. If you do that nine times, it will be very nicely spread. If you're very comfortable with plates, you can spin the plate like this on the inside of the lid, and that'll accomplish the same thing. What you need to make sure you don't do, though, is just spread it in the middle of the plate. That gives you a plate with just a little square of bacteria in the middle, and people will laugh at you. You don't want that. Once you're done, this is trash, it's disposable, it goes in the biohazard waste. And this gets flipped upside down 
and put into whatever incubator you're using to grow your bacteria.